Thank you. Thank you all for having me in Nijmegen. It was a nice drive from The Hague. So <laughs> it was like more than two hours because of traffic jams, but I'm pretty, pretty happy to be here to tell the story about a bunch of hackers, let's say helpful hackers from the day to day who are trying to save the digital world. So this is not a talk about the Red Cross who goes into these physical areas and protect people for harm, but about a group of helpful hackers. So Irfan already asked how many of you know Davey Day, so that answer I is already part of was part of my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> so I have another question then. Hopefully it works. My clicker wasn't working, so okay cool. So I'm gonna click like this. So why are you into information security? Is it for an ideological purpose? Is it more for in intrinsic? No. You just love nerdy computers. A social, I feel at home there. Or pragmatic, just because it earns a lot of money or other. So for A, put your hands up in the air. Cool. B, multiple answers are possible. <laughs> <laughs> C, social, okay, we have your less social, I can understand that a little bit from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, if, you, if you're in a group of hackers, it is a different kind of social, I would say. Um, pragmatic, cool, and any other stuff, and what, do you want to share, Martin? <laughs> yeah, uh, why is Q Cool. Actually, in the, in the in the software development part, yeah. So clicker, does it work? So okay, who am I? Shairus Algo is my name. So in my day job, I'm a security officer at TM Pro, and I'm an entrepreneur also. So I do a lot of product development in security, but also deliver services. And in my spare time, I take extra extra spare time. I'm a board member at uh, DVD in Dutch called Penningmeester. In English, it's a treasurer, and uh, I also give lectures on uh, quantum computing and uh, information security at the HVAs. So that's a little bit of my background. And if I have time over, and then I'm putting some energy in my hobbies, like climbing and bouldering. And uh, my email address is there, so you can email me if you have any questions. So who is the Davy Day? So what do we stand for? So this is our mission. Our mission is we aim to make the digital world safer by reporting vulnerabilities, actually scanning the whole internet, reporting those vulnerabilities we found or find in those systems to the rightful owners. Is it through your vendor? Is it through your ISPs? Is it through anyone we can find? We will try to um, notify you and, and say, okay, this is a vulnerable system. Please patch it, fix it. We have global reach, so we do it worldwide. Um, but as uh, our director says, Chris van der Hof says, we do, do it in a Dutch way. Free, open, honest, and collaborative. Free is because um, <laughs> in Dutch freestyle, but it also has a legal consequence. And open, honest, so we are here with our real names. We don't use pseudonyms. We even have a phone number. You can call us. We even have an office, uh, and we work with anyone, so we, we don't, um, how do you call it, discriminate. So we work with anyone if we can just solve a, a security flaw in your system. So that's the way how we work. So, But if you look at our daily practice, it's look a little bit like this. Okay, you won't see it, too much light, but... Actually, we are scanning the internet. We have our own autom autonomous system, uh, AS50559. And please put, a, put us on the allow list, not on the block list, mm -hmm. so that we can scan and help you so you can recognize uh, these IP series. Then you know we are helping you. We are trying to find vulnerabilities in your system and we will notify you. Um, so if you look at our research, what uh, the DVD is doing, because we are volunteer, we have three kinds of research. Uh, three bra 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 brands, we call it. First is um, scanning known vulnerabilities. So we scan known vulnerabilities. We download all the IP addresses. We scan, scan, it, we scan the IP addresses. So we ping the world. And when the, 
when we get a ping back, okay, the, this IP address is vulnerable, has this CVE, this old software, then we, we check in the who is database, um, who are you, we find our email addresses, and then we notify you. We actually notify, we send you an email or any contact details. So we send you, okay, please solve this. This is like, a, we found the CVE, this book, this patch. We actually are very like um, uh, prescriptive how you can solve it. So we can help you with that. The other br uh, uh, brand of research is uh, Zero Days. It's like our research department. They are more into uh, finding Zero Days. And when we find a Zero Days, uh, a zero day in a system or in a software. We try to work hard with the vendor. Again, we help to create a patch. And when a patch is there, we again scan the whole world. And we say, okay, there's a patch. Please, please solve it. And we have another brand. Uh, is it another brand? Is just searching for credentials. So critical credentials. And if we find it, we also warn you. We have found a credential. Look, if you didn't change the password, or please use 2FA, change the... Uh, change the password or do that so so those kind of stuff we are doing to help you but then i have a question again are we allowed to scan the whole internet if nobody has asked us or nobody has allowed us to do it are we allowed to do that depends very where you are where you are in the world okay martin obviously you are here <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on the level of scanning, how intrusive the scanning is. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tricky, it's a tricky part uh, there. I think um, we, as day to day, we kind of violate some computer uh, crime laws. We also kind of violate GDPR because nobody has asked us to do the head to to store those email addresses and the IP addresses, um, and we also share that with our information sharing providers because we cannot find everyone in our network we have to have our own network who find find these uh, these vulnerabilities so and why do we get away with it without with it so that's what we have uh, I'll check our code of conduct so this is uh, the code of conduct is like two pages on the internet you can look at it read through it I think it's pretty good stuff and it is not something we just uh, made up made up by ourselves so it's based on case law in the Netherlands. It is based on case law internationally, and we have like uh, these are the three main principles: societal need. So you kind of can violate uh, computer <laughs> computer crime <laughs> laws if it is in a for societal need. So if you do it for the good cause, and you don't have any financial gain, political gain, or individual gain. So so there is kind of Jurisprudential for it, so so that's that's good, but um, that's the first thing a judge will ask you. So did you do it for societal need? Did you were you there to help people? And then you say yes, 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 we were there. But um, so does it mean that you can just go around hacking and then when somebody asks you, oh yeah, ooh, we did it for societal need for a good cause. <laughs> No, that's also not the case. So when it's established that it's for societal need, the judge will go for the for the next part and just okay, was it proportional? So that's why the principle of proportionality is there. So the means that, that you apply to hack the system, try to infiltrate the system, was it in proportion to achieve the goal? So for example, I, uh, example in the digital world. So let's say you want to test a password recovery process and you came into vulnerabilities. You find vulnerabilities in the process by resetting an admin. Don't go resetting all the admin passwords because that's not a proportional. So, uh, so just proportional is very important. And then um, we have a proof of concept. Societal needs was established. Uh, proportionality was established. And then... Um, the next step the, 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 the judge will go into is um, the principle of subsidiarity. So we will reverse a little bit the process. So were the means, were the lesser means to show <laughs> your good cause? So if, if you had a mean, you use that mean to show that it is proportional, could you do it with, with, with lesser means? So that's the, the principle of subsidiarity. So let's say you hack into a system, um, you 
you can see the whole database you're on the system please don't go downloading all those uh, those files out of the system just make a screenshot so you can show okay we went as far as we could get we could go further but we didn't do it so it should be lesser means we we, we are using always lesser means so okay so this is a question yes when you say that the Dutch woman said they will not put you if you keep those three things yeah, and, it's not a legal agreement for and that is in, indeed, and I think that is one of the we are happy with that when the uh, with Dutch governments come up with it. But also, if you see in the U.S., there are also be, this kind of laws are, are are getting attention. And I would say we did a little bit our hand in it, so so that people, so, so that uh, um, these laws are changing. But these things are very important because uh, I'm very happy from from board member perspective. We don't have any legal lawsuits yes but okay so that's good so okay that's the boring stuff so i think you can doesn't came for legal lessons because i'm not a legal guy so let's go more into the our use cases so everybody know what happened the 2nd of july 2021 no so in uh, the 2nd of july the the largest ransomware attack happened on the kaseya vss software worldwide so what happened is that the, the, the Revel, uh, Revel or Revel attacked Kaseya and they thought we, we are going to ransom one, I think we calculated it a bit, approximately 1 million um, companies for ransom. But what they didn't know is that two months before that, um, David Day was already on this case. So... The second of July, everybody is hectic. You know what is happening around the world. Also in the Netherlands, um, a lot of soft um, the Kaseya software was vulnerable, was ransomed. Even the U.S. president was involved in this um, conversation. Okay, who is um, rival and what they want with us? And it all started with this guy here. Witze, Witze Bootra is on the left. Yeah, uh, it all started with Witze Bootra on the left. Yes, yes, Witze, Witze. No worries. Right. For you, the right, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, Witze on the, on the right. Um, and what, what you also see on, these, uh, on, the, on the slide is, uh, then on the left you have then Victor Gevers. Who knows Victor Gevers? Yeah. And Chris van der Hoff is uh, in the middle, but uh, but Victor is known of his hack of uh, actually the, the Twitter account of the, of the Donald Trump, and he didn't do it, did it twice, but twice. So <laughs> so, so that was uh, a little bit uh, to give you a little bit who is who. And um, let's say let's start then. So that is how our 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 case started. Casea uh, Fiesta uh, DVD 2021. Case zero 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 one. So, how did it begin? So, what Witze is doing? Witze in daytime he is a is a pen tester, and in nighttime he is a day videa. So, in daytime when he was working on a, on a, on on a, on a customer, he was pen testing through the network, and he f encountered this software called Kaseya PSA. And when he was hacking it and trying to find vulnerabilities in the network, he looked at it and said, this looks fishy. I think there are more stuff there to do. However, his assignment was um, find the vulnerabilities in the network in the system, not in the Kaseya software, because that's like just a third-party software. Um, he did it work. Uh, he, he did it. He, he, he went uh, through it and he said, okay, I find some vulnerabilities. By the way, I will uh, take the software, Kaseya software. I will bring it home. <laughs> we say, we say, you know, he, he just okay, I'm going to bring it home, install it on my lab, and he start poking with it. He start looking at it, and he and and he was thinking, is it is this software safe, or can I find something in it, and was it safe? So actually, <laughs> nah, it, it, it wasn't safe. So um, we found uh, in the first initial part uh, seven CVE. So one was credentials leak and film uh, business logic. Uh, <laughs> flaw. So what this was an interesting one first. So 
when you go to the download site, you download the client of uh, of, of Kaseya VSA. You install it. You get an ini file, and in the ini file there was a password, and you could get and with the password or the credentials, you could get a valid session. And not only for the agent, but you could do other stuff with it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we also find SQL injection. You think, wow, okay, um, remote code execution. So the the SQL injection was a blind site, uh, a kind of blind one. So you could um, enter data in it, but do not get data out of out of it. The remote code execution was out on um, on authenticated. It's even hard for me to get it out. So, okay. And we found a bunch of cross site scripting uh, um, vulnerabilities. And the other one was like the uh, uh, 2FA bypass. They apparently thought that um, handling authentication on the client, si client side was smart for 2FA. Okay, good. Don't do that, please. And we found two other um, uh, in injection attacks uh, there. So as I am here in the OWASP community, I did also a little bit of work at home. So I did some matching to your OWASP <laughs> top 10. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if I did it correctly because you, you made groupings now. So, uh, so I'm going back in 2017 early. So normally you could just do match, you know, remote code execution to one, but now you did a grouping very nice. So I did something, so okay. Uh, credentials leak and business logic flaw. I put it on the first category broken access control and identification authentication failure. If you look at it, a lot of injection attacks and uh, because client side authentication is not something we do, it's I say it is an insecure design flaw. Hopefully I did it correctly. If there are anyone who want to cover my mistake, please do some research. Um, and I'm here also to look at it because when I was creating this presentation uh, together with Chris, he thought, okay, as we are two organizations like voluntary, but also want to make the world a safer place, we have 50 cases work, uh, people are working on with finding CVAs. Is it possible to do a project where we could do a matching and, and create a report or a project? It's like, I think that is, I'm just putting there. So uh, it's well, something. CIA project. So we, we, oh, we afterwards, after okay, so. Yeah, you have a question? Well. You have a question? Yeah. That could be, but I didn't went in the mobile part, but, but that's okay. We, that's a good thing. We should, we should work on it to, to, I think we, did, we have a lot of data. You have data, so. Also, that is an awareness of that, so don't fix that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. good. So, yeah, I did my uh, my matching, but okay, what I also like to do is threat modeling. But that also, uh, we did it together with, with Frank Bredek. I'm calling that name because Frank Bredek, the CISO of uh, Super Phyllis, but also the crisis manager within uh, within the EVD. So, they created this kind of theoretical attack pad. So how could we attack the system using the vulnerabilities we have? And the DVD part is one, okay, we had this authentication bypass. Let's see, this works, yeah. And if you do the authentication bypass, you perform an SQL injection. And because it is a, a, a managed a software who manage a lot of uh, applications, endpoints, you could run batch batches. So you could put a batch on the task list and then the software just executes it. So you could do awesome stuff like, um, so when you are thinking, okay, um, could we run a crypto miner? <laughs> so if you, if you just say install crypto miner on this, it would install it. Install your own uh, server. It would create your own website and, and install it. And, um, then. We said, okay, cool, we can't do that because of code of conduct, you know, proportionality, associality. So we didn't went uh, so far, but, but this was then one of these uh, scenarios. The other was this nasty uh, remote code execution, even though we need to bypass the authentication. So what we did now, so, okay, we find it. So because this was like uh, not the 2nd of July, because it was two months before 2nd of July. So we said, okay, this is something we have to tell to our to the fender, to the fender. So we disclosed this to Kaseya, and Kaseya was very collaborative. So within two days, we already were talking with their CEO, 
and um, he was scared. He said, "Oh, whoa! You look, are you from the from U.S.? Are you a U.S. company? Or um, I will only have thirty days to solve this issue." We said, "No, we're going to give you enough time to solve it because there are very fundamental flaws." So we <laughs> built an also an Nmap scan, and 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 we scanned and try to find out how much instances are vulnerable. And the nice thing is in the scan, we also could get like a customer code out of it. And that was for Kaseya also very new. They said, oh, okay, th these are my customers. So they could, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the thing is, it's a managed, it's a managed provider. So they, they sell it to their customers and their customers resell it or they package it in a different way in, in, in embedded in another software so they couldn't find it but okay so but still they should have a little bit an overview of who their customers are or who are using the system but we help them with that also so they could um, um, find their notify their their customers um, and we didn't disclose it that yet at that moment in time because we thought that the risk when we disclose these vulnerabilities could be misused um, by criminals. So that's what we did. And uh, let's fast forward then <laughs> um, again to the 2nd of, uh, of July, uh, so two months after that. So I vividly remember where I was because it is not a picture of that day. I, I like climbing. I was also climbing, I know. And I was climbing and I it was like on Friday I was climbing. I uh, after climbing, I look at my phone. I said, "Whoa, I have so much messages. What the hell happened?" So, um, and I had like ten, fifteen messages, but I know Frank had like two hundred messages, <laughs> and Rita was also being called. And I said, "Okay, so what happened?" And it was actually, um, I called back. I called Frank back because I saw an email of Frank. I said, "Okay, what happened?" He said, and then I I was CISO at Monu, one of these small uh, companies. He said. You are safe. We are not using Kaseya VSA, but I think it is bigger than uh, than only the, these kind of companies. It's a worldwide uh, incident. Um, and when it happened directly, David Day started a, a crisis call together with, uh, with with Kaseya. We helped them in crisis management. They also needed some support there. Um, we also helped them in their decision to take down the the, the SaaS, uh, SaaS SaaS solution. And be, and because our script was a little bit old, or Nmap script, we, we we created and we finally changed it, and we scanned it again. We scanned again uh, the whole internet to find these vulnerable versions, so that they could like with the new information notify their own customers, and we were also notifying those those customers. And then we did it. We rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, and try to solve the issue. But then our CISO. <laughs> At, uh, at David A asked us, did they hack us? Did they hack David A? Because how could Rival get those exploits? So we did res we did a research, we did an investigation, and we concluded David A wasn't hacked. And the reason why we thought is because they did something differently. They found Rival found another zero day in the system, and it was a arbitrary file upload. Uh, Execution also very tricky, and they all but but they use our authentication bypass, and with the local inclusion file they could include a ransomware executable, and and actually they went for the money. So so on one hand we thought okay good that we 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 think now at that moment in time they didn't hack us so because of our investigation, and secondly, um, they use another path to. To get through the system, so uh, they didn't use our vulnerability, so that was good to know. Um, so it worked. It worked in a sense that we, our work, you know, we, we scanned, we scanned, and we, we notified, and we notified. And what you see is that within this is a weekend, eh? so we are over two, three days here. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Monday is the fourth of July, or was it Monday or Sunday? I don't know. Sunday. So it dropped. The amount of vulnerable systems dropped. One, because they were ransomed. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and, and the second is we, we called and we helped. Out. So we don't know actually um, which one were ransomed or which one weren't. So we are not there. We just provide you the information. Please solve the issue. Um, 
I also know that um, DVD members were calling customers and customers were at, the, at, at barbecues. Please uh, look at your system. I think it's vulnerable. Solve it. Uh, so, 4th of July, um, there was zero, zero vulnerable versions online in the Netherlands. So, in that sense, it worked. But it also didn't work. Because Coop Supermarket in Denmark had to close 500 of their uh, offices, of their branches. And uh, nearly 1,500, I think, yes. I, we don't know actually still yet what the impact is. We still see new customers coming out that um, that they were part of the... They were hacked, they were ransomed, like Hopper Browers. Yesterday we were there, Hopper Browers IT technique, that they were part and they were ransomed. But 1,500 uh, based on this, this data. Um, so... Because of that, we also have this quote of Mikko uh, Hippenen. So rarely is anyone thanked for the work they did to prevent the disaster that didn't happen. And we were true. We were there. We were like nearly in there. But yeah, I think we failed. We failed just before the finish. Uh, we failed. But we were thanked still by uh, uh, because we could like decrease the impact of the ransomware and that's the part of our job sometimes you fail sometimes you don't fail yeah and there was a SaaS solution also so why wasn't the SaaS solution impacted because the SaaS solution they didn't have this authentication bypass and um, Revel the other way we know that we weren't hacked is because Revel didn't have this remote code execution vulnerability. Because if they had that, um, I think the impact on the SaaS version would be very, very, very much, and it would be a disaster for us. We had a, and also we didn't. Uh, there were which we are challenged a lot. You know, second uh, July, why didn't you disclose earlier? Because, uh, and then we have we have a lot of reasons why we didn't and we thought if we would do it the impact would be bigger but now we're working so all lesson learned is with our vendors when we work with them please fix it as soon as possible if you don't fix it now you will be the next yeah question how much time have you been like in the in the two months two months yeah so actually, uh, and I think we were very good on the way because two months solving those fundamental flaws in in a system and patching it and distribute distributing it to the like like a million uh, like like thousand companies and they have again hundred customers they have again ten customers yeah I think it's nearly reasonable in our policy we we have like ninety days we want to give you for before the full disclosure and full disclosure is then within ninety days if you don't solve it, we're going to disclose it full. Uh, that's all, all, all our policies, but we are, yeah, it, it could be 30, it could be 90, we, did, we decided 90 is a, it's a good benchmark. But so not all of them were fixed. Some of those, I think we had more, more vulnerable CPEs, but these were the known ones which were being misused, we couldn't fix it at that moment in time. If the fix was there, it, I mean, uh, it wouldn't happen. So that's why we we just at the finish line. If we would patch it, yeah, and uh, we would solve the issue. But cool, that happened. But there was a satisfying ending. So the rival gang was arrested. So that was uh, a good thing for us, or maybe for the whole world. But I know that the rival is still around. I think I'm lonely wolf. But that was uh, a satisfying ending. So that was one use case. I think I, I, I have one use case more. I don't know if I'm doing on time. Okay, cool. Then we'll go faster to this one. So this is the global charities and, and healthcare uh, case we're we do, we doing. It's still, this, this will be an ongoing. This, this won't stop any time, any place. This is something we will just go on doing it. And we decided upon it. So as I said, we scan, we notify, we fixed. We scan, we notify, we fix. And we are scanning like uh, 40 cases. I think we are farther. We have, we have more cases now. 
and somewhere um, in June we were scanning and we were scanning and scanning scanning cases and then we saw the news this happened we said oh and what we saw is that the Red Cross was being hacked and data of uh, vulnerable people were in danger we said oh how did it happen could we have stopped it or not and then we got another news that this managed engine of Soho was being used in the attack. They identified it. And then we thought, hmm, we have heard this, we, we know this name from somewhere. And we looked back, we looked back and then we saw that <laughs> we had a Slack channel. We created a Slack channel. We did an investigation. Uh, this was before, before, before the, the attack on, on, on a Red Cross. But the issue was that our scan, the, the method we, we, we created to scan and find the vulnerability would harm the system more. And so we didn't do it, our code of conduct again. So we didn't scan it and we couldn't help it. So we were like pretty sad that it happened because we want to help. We actually wanted to help, uh, you know, so. But we have to follow our code of conduct. And uh, so we are not for hire. Um, and we don't work for individual organizations. So we needed to be a little bit hacky about our own uh, code of conduct. Um, we bought, because we are sad. So we said, okay, we cannot target individuals and, and individual company, uh, companies. So what are we are going to do? So we're going to scan them all. <laughs> <laughs> So we thought, okay, instead of only scanning the Red Cross, we're going to scan all the NGOs, all these charities and healthcare organizations and try to help there. And so this case started. So we have two cases now, our charities case and, and, and the healthcare case. And it resulted in a new approach for us. This was not, we are not going to scan on a single uh, um, vulnerability for them, but we're going to scan for more. We're going to do more aftercare. So normally, when you have a, 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 a how do you call it, a company which has customers and which uh, a commercial company, thank you, yeah, a commercial company, then we we send them a notification that this is your ownership, please fix it. But now we do more aftercare. We call them or we chase them. Please, please fix it because we think differently, and the reason why we think differently is and they think differently. These NGOs, charities, they want to solve and save the world, and make it better. We want to do it also, so we try to help them also doing that. And we helped, we helped, we helped, we helped. We found a lot of, a lot of thank you messages. We solved also a lot of vulnerabilities. So are we done? Nope, we are not done. And so what we are doing now is in every case that we find a vulnerability, we also check if the vulnerability is also in the, in a charity community. So we're gonna again scan, notify them based on our data. So we have a whole list of IP, ad IP addresses, domains of these healthcare organizations. So if we found uh, when it's, when a CV is out and we scan the whole world, we also will take them into account. We will filter that and then we're gonna do an aftercare for them. We're gonna aftercare, we're gonna help them. The reason why we saw is we saw a pattern that all these charities and these healthcare organizations and NGOs are hacked is because I think they have they are doing a lot of good work, we think also, but they don't have time to do their security or they don't prioritize it, they don't have budget, or they don't embed security in their product. Uh, so that's a little bit of pattern that we see. And then if we see that pattern, and I think, okay, where does DVD stand in this software development life cycle? So, if you look at uh, this picture, and I think, so for every product you build, you know, you do ideation phase, you, you get some requirements, you're going to do product development, and then you're going to deploy and main, maintain it. So, where does DVD fit in? At the end, of the process, I think. And OWASP fits in the requirements engineering phase. So you go to the OWASP that I do, 
I'm just saying it. I think that. But if you have any new input from you guys, I would love it and put my put it in a presentation or make it easily. But I think in the if I look how I'm using OWASP, it's using it more in a one awareness. Second, I use those uh, top ten. I use the mobile requirement list to give it to my teams uh, in their software development life cycle. So I think OWASP it in the product development, maybe even in the ideation phase. I would always like to be that it's in the in, as first secure by design, secure f first. But I think OWASP is there. But David is also at the beginning. So when we find a zero day, it goes indeed in the ideation phase again. In the product development life cycle, it goes through the process. So we have this circle around. This, I think, is where we, we stand. And now, a little bit about governance, because I think it's try to understand how we look like. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is advanced cat herding, we call it. So, the evening governance. So, this is a bunch of people. These are empty. Looks like this. So, we, we had a, a strategy session. Even we, have a, as, a, as a voluntary organization, we do strategy sessions to create a roadmap, to create a vision, a mission, and how can we implement that vision and for the greater good. And it, the governance looks like this. So, we have a RVT, uh van Commissarse, let's say supervisory board called in, in English, a board of we have a board, a director, and we have teams. And if I'm telling that it looks like a company, <laughs> it's, but it isn't. This is what we had to make just to get structure because we are growing so fast that we needed like an HR department. We also needed communication department. Even we because we did some great work. We got more funding and then we had to manage that funding. So we got funding from the DTC, but also from Hunters, it's a blood bounty hackers community from the US. So we need that. Uh, and they, they gave us this money. They said, okay, because you did so good work and you're doing great work, we want to keep you uh, there. Uh, and we want to have this continuity of the organization being, uh, being held up. But if you ask us, if we don't have money, we still will go on doing it because we started without money, so we don't need money actually to go on. But it helps because our hardware, software, and those boring work of HR need to be done by some people. Sorry, if I, I have a question there. I just wanted to know, I mean, you know, I mean the volunteering part, I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People, uh, but obviously, hardware and software. Yeah. So how was that paid for? If you are a uh, 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 if you are if you are a uh, voluntary stichting, you can get it for free for the Cantor automatizing for office uh, applications. But we were we we got sponsors. For example, Schubert Phillips was a sponsor. So everywhere we go, like VMware was, is a sponsor of us. So if you go to the website, you will see we get a lot of sponsoring. And any time when we go and ask uh, funding, they said, "Okay, oh, you get it for free. You know, please take it for free because you're doing good work." And we are happy that we get something for free so that we can scan, solve, fix the internet for the future yeah. and for now. Yeah. The other thing what is uh, very important for us, so um, we are creating a day day academy. So we need people. People is like our, our core, our most important assets. Is, uh, and that's why we are creating a day day academy. Because we also see that we, we are, to get good people, uh, we need to teach good people. So the, and we will give them lessons. So part will be like guest lectures, plus uh, a part will be actually lectures from the universities or the local schools. So we're setting up a program to create this whole academy that at the end, when we are not there, hopefully others are there to um to do this great cause for us. And the other thing we are doing is CSERT Global. It's another it's another foundation we set up. I think this is a very important one. Uh, the blue the, the yellow dots are not chapters, but I think we we stole this chapter thing from the OWASP community. <laughs> so in the Netherlands um we kinda 
build a, 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 a C cert chapter, like we call it now, the uh, together with the, with other uh, foundations, the Netherlands Security Melkpunt. But we also want to build multiple um, C certs around the around the world or work with them together. So in UK and US, we already started. We also had good conversations already with uh, Finland cert. But the goal is that a lot of these dots, that we have more dots on this map so that we could conquer the world. <laughs> so that's uh, for CSER Global. Because the reason is that, uh, when we find the vulnerability, uh, oh, Ivan? Yes? Yeah, just, just uh, I'm very impressed because you started with your, your sort of constraints, what you can do, what you cannot do as a volunteer or what you can do. I'm very interested mm -hmm. when you're going to roll out the opportunities which you're doing, whether that changes the problem. Because I think every sort of region uh, can have their own laws, right? Actually, that's why also we want these local uh, chapters, so they understand their local law better, and they also know the community better, so that we can also, when we scan the internet and we say, okay, we find a vulnerability, if it's somewhere in China, please, China cert, can you solve it? Or US cert, can you solve Or India cert, can you solve it? Within your local regulatory boundaries. So if you look in our uh, board, we also have a, a DPO, which has international law studies and everything, so understanding international law. Uh, because it's the gray field, so you know, and, uh, we, we need to look into that one. So we started a pilot already uh, in uh, in UK. US will be started, and uh, and so it's like risk, uh, trying to conquer the world. Uh, so as we are here with David Day and OWASP together, I would end with this quote. A bug is never just a mistake, it represents something bigger, an error of thinking that makes who you are. So let's make this world bug free. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Questions, yes. Yeah, what do you think about uh, vulnerability scanners like Shogun? We are using Shogun. Yeah. Also, yeah. So we have our own scan infra, but we we use Shodan, we have a license there, and that helps us also on, on one hand. Yeah, the answer is yes. Um, yeah. You have to think about it. Is it gray, black, white area? We, we are trying to use it for the greater cause again. Yeah. yeah. Because does Shodan also apply to these laws here in the Netherlands, or are they just getting into Good question. I have to ask my legal. <laughs> no, no, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if, if it applies to that law. Uh, of, of our, but but it we we as a community. So every time when you come in a DVD, this code of conduct and everything is like pushed to you. So we have to think, okay, what are we going to do with the data, the information we get out of it? So I think that's more important than only looking at show them, but also what do you do with this information? Yeah, yeah. Um, so my question is, do you? Uh, um Scan um, only equipment in, in the Netherlands, or, or, or maybe also abroad. And um, yeah, and yeah. So what, what is your? What well, is we scan all IP addresses, uh, IP4 range, the whole IP4 range uh, around the whole world. So it's not worldwide. It's not. Uh, and then if we can, if we have the the right person at the right place, then we are going to um, notify you when we get a ping back. Okay, you have a very vulnerable software somewhere in Singapore, Japan. Then we are, um, then we go. We are going to notify you if it is not via NCSA, because we have a, we have a, we have good relations with NCSA. So sometimes we have to do it via NCSA, or we do it via another process if NCSA is not there. So because NCSA has a lot of context, I hope you will explain that a little bit more. I didn't want it to get into your field, but yeah. So that's why we have this whole network of people who know people's of organization who who knows organization. Yes. How do you determine which uh, super uh, research for zero days? Do you feel that that might somehow impact your independence? We, we, we have our C search and research lead, and <coughs> they just use a look at it uh, in, the, in the way it's. We are not uh, trying to specify, speci specially look at products, suites like. For example, we are not going after SCP or we are not going, but if we find it during our research, we do a scan and we think something is fishy, 
we can maybe find more vulnerabilities, then we will go and and do more research on it. For example, this was a solar man case. This was about um, IoT devices. Just came across. We were scanning and we found uh, credentials on a GitHub. And then we said, okay, cool. Let's see what this can do. And then, okay, but this is for uh, for the grid, managing grid, and those kind of stuff. I don't know the details. That's another research we're doing. So it, actually, we don't try to focus on products. And uh, hopefully, with our um, I call it social control, social control within our that we that we get, we manage that a little bit. Um, yeah, is that they are hackers, you know? So um, <laughs> how do you secure a company with hackers, and how do you help them? And I think they do it because they have an ethical value. They do it because of these three principles: societal need. They are there for doing it for free. So yeah, those kind of stuff. Soft controls, yes. <laughs> I don't know if you use fuzzing technique. I have to check with my with with, the, with our research department if you do fuzzing. I know that fuzzing is very nice for hardware, but on chips and things like that, you could also do fuzzing of software. I think that's um, that's a research that maybe we can work together if at universities to do fuzzing more on on kind of SaaS applications. Yeah, in our board of in our in our um, supervisor board we have Herbert Boss. So Herbert Boss knows a lot of fuzzing, um, fuzzing software, but I don't know. I, I, technically, that's kind of also because I'm part of this, the board. I don't also want to interfere a lot with what operational is happening. But this is thing. I, I think something we have to. I can bring back to the to the team. Nah. So so what what if you look at this part, uh, the governance. So the technology, it's like uh, you're the product owner, you put your vision and, and everything there, and you said, team, do it in your way. So we're, the, the technology is, is technology independent. So we try to be giving them the, the most uh, flexibility they have. Yeah. A question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, about the detection tools that you built for NMAP. Uh, like, how exploited the AB or detection? Because I imagine it's like interesting new traffic coming from your AS. Some groups might be interested in the kinds of scans that you're carrying out for you know, new vulnerabilities. <laughs> That's a good question. Um, so we test our scripts and we, we try to be at less, uh, uh, less invasive. Uh, that's, I think, the only what I can say. So we're testing it, testing it out, scanning it. Sometimes we see things breaking and we have to, oh, shit, no, we have to re rebuild it. So that's happened also because, yeah, you, you, things break when you, when, you, when you try to scan it for a good cause also. But we don't try to break everything at once. So that's why we also do it in a proof of concept way, try to test the script, for example, Log4j, we work together with DTAC, uh, create and scan, and try to be less invasive also for it. Yeah. And I guess like, if you have um, a, a new scan coming out all of a sudden, because if people are looking for the traffic that is coming from your ad space, yeah. and they see a, a new, a new from, added, from the same IP range, yeah, then we're the good guys. Range, maybe people might get interested in, oh, all of a oh. sudden there's a new scan. Maybe I should look in the software to find new zero data. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's, a, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Can, can, I, can I do a suggestion? Because we are just... Asking let's let's take that offline. We're going to have a break now. Very short break of, let's say, 10 minutes, 15 minutes maximum. And then we're going to come back and we're going to have Kun uh, you know, sharing his story with us. Um, but in the break, of course, you can reach out to Shannon yeah. and ask the questions because I thought, did see a few more hands going up in the air. So please keep the question and you'll, uh, you'll be able to ask that question to Shannon uh, in the break or even after the presentation. Okay? That's it for